Today, I'll be showing you our DIY battery setup in our truck camper. We have a 2020 Scout Olympic model truck camper. The setup you're about to see could really be used in any type of van, uh, truck camper, or travel trailer. I'm gonna be breaking this video up into four different segments. First segment is gonna be a quick look at the setup. The second segment is gonna explain why we wanted to make this setup. The third segment is gonna be a detailed look at our system where we go over what each part does and we look at diagrams showing you the wiring. Then in the fourth segment, I'm gonna go over how I picked all the products that we used in our setup. Starting on the outside, we have a NOCO plug-in and that just allows us to easily plug an extension cable into the outside of the camper and we basically have like a dual outlet extension cable on the inside so one of those is open then the other one is what our ac charger for the battery setup gets plugged into now if we head into the camper that's really the only thing on the outside that's different and over here we no longer have the goal zero the only uh, wiring components that are in here is uh, the other side of that plug that you just saw but that was a big reason why we wanted to do this setup was to make this storage and make this all battery over here we have our 300 amp hour heated lithium iron phosphate battery from Sun Fun Kits um, with Bluetooth capabilities. We did have to drill a hole um, so the wires could come through. Right here is our AC charging unit from Sun Fun Kits and it's the same brand as the battery and it's just plugged into the under the end of that plug I showed you on the outside. This is what the other end looks like. And then we have some 12 volt outlets, a Renogy 50 amp uh, MPPT controller with DC to DC capabilities. That's how we have our solar panels plugged in. We have a Blue Sea fuse box and a Sean two switches and then a wire going up to our battery monitor. And we also have some USB plugs and 12 volt outlets here. And those are all tied into the fuse block. That wraps up the quick look segment. I hope you liked it. If that's all you wanted to stick around for, I think at this point, let's head inside and let's get to the explanation part as to why we wanted to build this. There was three reasons. The first one is because we installed a diesel heater and then we also have Starlink and that draws a lot of power. The second reason is because we really wanted this area where the Goal Zero used to be uh, to be storage instead. We really liked this storage and we did use it. It was just hard to get into and our dog likes to lay in this dinette area. And then our last reason, we were having bad luck and trouble with the Goal Zero that this camper came with. We bought this used this past May and it came with a Goal Zero Yeti 1000 and we think when we got it, it had reduced capacity. Um, it would never really charge up past 80% and towards the end of the summer, um, it would start randomly turning off and we weren't able to really use it at all and it just wasn't reliable. Now it's time for the detailed thorough look at everything. And I think the first thing I wanna do is show you these two diagrams that I drew. I've got two diagrams here that I drew a little earlier, and we're gonna start with this one. And this is just a basic look. If you were looking down in here, that's just what this is showing you. Now we are looking at the basic wiring diagram for our setup, and all the wires on here are positive wires. None of the negative wires are on this sheet, just because then it gets a little confusing. But you can see up here, all the negative wires connect here on the MPPT controller. I just didn't want to draw those out because uh, it would just be more of a mess. I think to start, we should start with our battery and battery monitor. And there's only a few wires running off of that. We have one wire going to the negative side through the shunt to the battery monitor, which is up there. And that's basically a data wire. We have a small red wire connected to the positive end of the battery. And that is just so the battery monitor can know how much power is going out of the battery. This really isn't that smart of a battery monitor. We had to tell this monitor that we were using a 300 amp hour battery. And then it basically does like a countdown from 300 based off of all the power that is getting sucked out of the battery. Moving on from the battery, we have a main wire of the positive terminal going to directly to a 50 amp fuse, and I'll show you that later. We also have like a main shutoff switch. That's one of the big red switches down there. And that's just going to the positive side of the MPPT controller. Moving on, we have our fuse block, and we're using a 12 circuit uh, Blue C brand fuse block. And this is where all the accessories get connected. We have one wire running from the positive side of the MPPT controller to the fuse block and that just powers all of our different 12 volt outlets that are running off of the fuse block. So they're each on their own 10 amp fuse. And we did it this way just to keep it simple. Most things in here already had like a 12 volt plug on the end of it. All of these have a different plug. And this one we don't keep plugged into all the time, but our fridge has a plug. We have an extra open outlet, the left side and the right side 
of those plugs are on their own separate fuse. We also have our diesel heater. Going over here, we have our solar panel and that's what our other big red switch is. We just have a main cutoff switch for our solar panel and that just ties into the other side of the MPPT controller. And then this is not currently set up at all, but we plan on doing this soon. So this really isn't part of the setup yet. We have not connected the DC to DC charging portion of the system yet, but this is basically how it's going to be set up. We're gonna have another switch and it's gonna be directly connected to the MPPT controller. Now moving on to our AC charging and AC is just the regular wall outlet that you'd find in a house. You can see I had to make a change. I messed up the diagram. I originally had it routed to the truck battery. The truck battery has nothing to do with it. This is probably the most simple part of the setup. It's simply just, we have the AC charging unit plugged into an extension cord when we're plugged in and that's directly connected to the battery. Now that we looked at the diagrams together, I'm gonna to move this table out of the way and then show you all the components up close. And if we wanna charge something or turn on our diesel heater, all I have to do is go over here and turn it on or plug in anything that I need to charge. I even got a little 12 volt uh, laptop charger to plug my laptop into because as you saw, we do not have an inverter as part of the setup. We do have a little portable inverter that we use when we need to. Whenever we use Starlink, we just plug that into one of the 12 volt parts and uh, plug our Starlink router into that. I just plugged in an extra strand of USB lights. So you can see it's great to have your stuff being able to sit out and charge and it doesn't have to be tucked away in here, especially if it's a phone or a laptop and something you're actively using. That pretty much covers the power station. It's pretty basic and it's really not that big. Let's take a look down in this cubby again. We have our 300 amp hour heated lithium iron phosphate battery from Sun Fun Kits. Um, with Bluetooth capabilities. It's basically just the battery with the wires coming off of it. You can see I had to cut this and make the opening a little bit wider. You can kind of see up there, but you really can't tell since we have these doors. Let's look over here again at all the different components. You can see this is the Renogy 50 amp MPPT controller and these screw on and off on each side. So it just kind of protects where your uh, wires are screwed in on here. It kind of hides it too, so you can't really see what's going on. This is just our main battery switch down here. This is the fuse and shunt. This is our main switch that connects our solar to the whole setup. In that area right up there, you can kind of see the pencil outline. That's where our main switch is gonna go for our DC to DC charging. Then this thing is just our little AC converter charger. And that's from Sun Fun Kits. So you can see that's also directly connected to the battery and has an on off switch. We always leave it in the on position. So whenever we plug in an extension cord to the outside thing, it just automatically starts charging up our battery. Down here, this is our fuse block. As I said, it's a blue C brand. That's a 12 circuit, it's pretty simple. And that's just what all of these things are plugged into. They're all labeled, so it's kind of easy to troubleshoot. This one is the fridge. This is the diesel heater, and that is the Scout wiring down below. We also have wires running up to this thing up here. And so far, everything has been working great. And you can see we really don't have a ton of room in here. I could have mounted an inverter here, and we could still do that down the road if we really find that we want one. All the wiring that we got, either it came with the product that we bought, or it came from our local Home Depot. So this wire, all these wires, and these blue connectors that you're seeing, came from Home Depot. And then for these plugs that we got, the ones down here and the ones up there, I just went with no name brand ones on Amazon. Um, just ones that had good reviews. I specifically picked these USB ports because they were a dual port USB and they also did not light up, which was something I was thinking about. I didn't want this to like light up really bright at night. You can see we're now outside looking in that side storage compartment because we had to drill a hole to have our wires come up and go into the bottom of the counter. So you can see they're wrapped nicely in the wire loom, but that's just going out of the back of that other cubby and then running up the inside of this and going into a hole that we drilled up into the bottom of that little white box. I did recently make a separate video about it, but our diesel heater is mounted in here and the wires for that are running up through. You can kind of see it down there. I wanted to talk about the wire gauge for everything that we used. To connect the solar panel into our new system, we went with 10 AWG gauge wire. That's just what Scout was using. 
So on our connector on our side, that's what we used as well. From the battery to the MPPT controller, we're using six AWG wire. The DC to DC charging isn't set up yet, but we're gonna be using four AWG gauge wire for that setup. Now it's on the fourth segment, and that's gonna be explaining why I picked and went with the products that I used for the system. First product I wanna talk about is why we went with the battery from SunFun kits. And it really came down to price and size. There's a lot of lithium iron phosphate batteries on the market that are really good for your money. Um, there's like Live Time, SOK makes good batteries. Everyone's heard of Battleborn. Um, Dakota Lithium is another big one. I really wanted the Dakota Lithium 280 amp hour heated uh, battery but it was very expensive. I think that's like $2,400. I think it's slightly smaller compared to the one we have and that would have fit in the space really well. Really, that's why we were limited because we knew we wanted it all to fit down here. We thought about putting a battery in the outside compartment, but that's a lot colder. We wanted at least 200 amp hours. So it hit that requirement. It was like a lot cheaper than the Dakota Lithium one. Uh, the Battleborn batteries are great. I know they have great customer service, but for the money, for the amp hours that you get, um, it's just like not your best option. And they really don't make anything small enough that would still fit in the space that we wanted to put it in. So that's just how we ended up going with the SunFun Kits battery. I watched a handful of reviews. It's a company based out of Louisiana and they sell battery kits if you wanna like buy cells and put the batteries together uh, yourself. It has a Bluetooth capabilities right into it and it has a low temp charging sensor and it also has a heated feature. So that's kind of cool to turn that on um, if we know we're not gonna be in here a while, but we're still gonna have like something running that's not the heater obviously if the interior heater in the camper is going we don't really need to use that feature of the battery but that was another factor we wanted it to have either a low temp charging sensor so it wouldn't hurt itself in the cold weather or have the heating function so we could use it in cold weather and it just happened to have both and so far so good we'll really have to see and that's how we ended up with the 300 amp hour battery from SunFun kits for our ac charging unit I just bought the one from SunFun Kits to keep it the same brand as the battery. That was like $140, $150. And it's not the smallest one. I think Victron sells a smaller one. But I just wanted to get the one that was the same brand as the battery. For the battery monitor and the MPPT controller, I decided on going with a Renogy brand product. Just because it seemed like a lot of people use them and they're good for your money. They're a good value product. I know a lot of high-end van builds We'll use uh, Victron Energy products. And I know those are really good quality, but it just didn't really fit in our budget. Also, in all the DIY uh, electrical builds I watched, a lot of people were using Renergy products. And uh, that's just why I went with those, because they were familiar. For the big red switches and for our fuse block, the reason why I went with the Blue Sea brand products is same thing to Renergy. I would see it in a lot of uh, DIY build videos I would watch. And again, it seemed like a very good uh, value product for how much you pay and what you get. I really like how it has like a cover that snaps on the whole thing and how it wasn't too big. It was pretty compact. So the size of the products also played a factor into the decision as well. For the most part, I think that really covers everything. I hope this video helps someone out or gives you ideas if you're looking to make your own setup. Making your own battery setup at first can seem very hard and complicated, but as you just saw, it really doesn't have to be when you break it all down. If you wanted to do something similar, you could use all the same components we did and just use a smaller battery or a bigger battery, depending on your setup and what you want to do. Again, you could easily add an inverter into this setup to give you more capabilities on what you could run. As always, thanks for watching. I'm going to be posting links to everything I used in the uh, description. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask in the comments.